Okay, welcome to second lecture, week three. Um, first, a little bit of admin. Um, so, um, good work with uh, assignment one. Uh, 20 groups handed in, uh, meaning around 60 people uh, were involved in the lab hand ins. Deadline was on Tuesday. Then the QA session is on Monday. It's kind of an oral examination, mainly to make sure that all the lab group participants have been active and understand the submitted solution. So um, this is about uh, 15 minutes per group and there is a schedule. Let's see if I can show it. Um, so there were slots in the uh, calendar and most people have filled in there. A few people had some technical problems so they have been filled in our, in our internal <laughs> Emacs org mode table but uh, you can hopefully check your own time here um, if that was not a problem for you. So uh, back to Emacs. So uh, there will be one Zoom meeting ongoing uh, and uh, there will be a waiting room so that please um, connect around five minutes before your slot and wait in the waiting rooms, make sure all your group members are also ready. And then there will be some round robin uh, questioning of uh, things about the lab so that you should be able to explain what the code is, is doing and how you were thinking about it. And we will reuse the Zoom link from the exercise sessions uh, and the link and password as, as usual in Canvas. Um, if there are any special questions about this, you can try them in the chat. May I ask where is the Jamboard link? That's a good question. Uh, I can copy it uh, into the chat. I seem to have forgotten to put it in the Canvas page. Uh, let's at least make sure it's here. Okay, that should do it. Sorry about that. Good point. Um, any other questions? Um, Okay, so we had a mid mid course evaluation meeting. Well, that's its course. It's I, you don't have to be suddenly shocked that we're halfway through the course yet. It's only week three out of eight, but that's um, we made sure to have the meeting reasonably early so that we can get feedback and improve the course. And there were four main points here. Um, so first, uh, course actions that I did uh, based on student feedback from the first week. There was uh, changing the home page from the course memo page to the lecture media links page. Um, I also got a request to, to add a mapping between lectures and the book sections to make sure that you know where, where I'm, what I'm talking about. And there is now in the Git repo updated after each lecture, there is a, a links to the YouTube recordings and the corresponding sections of the book. And as usual, the short version is here is read chapter N for study week N. Um, lecture media is uploaded after each lecture and there's this playlist on YouTube. And there has also been some book typos fixed. I'm very grateful for some pull requests and also found some through issues. Um, there is an errata file uh, in the Git repo. So if you want to check if something seems confusing, if you want to check if it's a found typo or not, you can check the errata file. Um, then there were some discussions yesterday in this um, course evaluation meeting about how to read the book. So I was basically, so there were comments about the book is abstract, the book is hard, it, it's dense and so on, which I think is, a, is a, often a feeling for many mathematically inclined topics. And I would suggest that you work with the material on paper or with Haskell. So just reading it as, as um, a novel won't really work. You will have to sort of try to explore what the different things can mean and maybe look them up in other sources and so on. And uh, as a practical help, the code of all chapters is now available in separate files in the repository. So before the code was also available, but mixed up with all the lecture text or the chapter text. And now I've created separate files. So for example, for uh, this chapter, uh, there is a, 
a code.ajs file, which has only the, the sort of code blocks from the chapter and correspondingly for the previous chapter, propositional logic code.ajs just has the code blocks and nothing of the comments. And uh, that could be useful when you want to sort of open and, and try it out and experiment with some of the definitions. Um, okay. Um, there was some discussion about the Zoom meeting. I wasn't aware that I had the less than impressive one frame per second in the screen sharing. So Zoom is very focused on, on sharing faces. So uh, if you check the statistics page right now, I'm not sure what it says, but uh, when we checked it during the, this meeting, it was one frame per second for the screen sharing. And for the my face had, well, like 20, 30 frames per second, which is a bit silly. I don't know exactly how to solve this. Uh, I've been experimenting with now using a lower resolution on the screen and different settings. Um, I'm not quite sure to what degree it works, but some experiments are underway to improve this. And um, yeah, if, if you have feedback from examples where it works well or not well, then that's good. I at least know now that I should not exper expect a one second uh, delay for the answers because it might be several seconds before you actually hear or see what I'm doing. Um, and then we discussed a bit that we need more active exercise sessions. So currently, as I mentioned in the first lecture, we have uh, four hours per week scheduled for lectures and four hours as exercise sessions. And that's just eight hours in total, whereas the course work is supposed to be on the order of 20 hours a week. That means that you will have to sort of schedule yourself for the other 12 hours. And that also means that people run into problems uh, sometimes and for some reason, those questions and the problems you have are not resolved. And it, even the questions don't really reach me or the teaching team often. So, and it's this idea we've had so far of posting your Zoom link on Canvas, that mode for getting feed, getting help and the exercise sessions is not, does not seem as efficient as it should be. So after discussing it with the student representatives yesterday, we've decided to try to use the Zoom lecture link and breakout rooms. So there's basically a co-working space uh, that you can be in different group rooms and, and work on your different problems. And then I can move around or the TA can move around between different uh, breakout rooms and answer questions. And we'll experiment with that tomorrow and on Tuesday and see how well it works. Okay, any questions about the admin part here? Okay, then I will uh, stop and start.